Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. In this last video for topic 2 describing data, we will look at skewness. Besides central tendency and dispersion, another characteristic of a data set is the shape. There are generally four shapes commonly observed, that is symmetrical, positively skewed, negatively skewed, and bimodal. In a symmetrical set of observations, the mean and median are equal and the data values are evenly spread around these values. The data values below the mean and median are a mirror image of those above. A set of values is skewed to the right or positively skewed if there is a single peak and the values extend much further to the right of the peak than to the left of the peak. In this case, the mean is larger than the median. In a negatively skewed distribution, there is a single peak but the observations extend further to the left, in the negative direction, than to the right. In a negatively skewed distribution, the mean is smaller than the median. Positively skewed distributions are more common. Salaries, for instance, follow this pattern. Think of the salaries of those employed in a small company of about 100 people. The president and a few top executives would have very large salaries relative to the other workers and hence the distribution of salaries would exhibit positive skewness. A bimodal distribution will have two or more peaks. This is often the case when the values are from two or more populations. So how do we measure skewness? There are several formulas in statistical literature used to calculate skewness. The simplest is developed by Professor Carl Pearson, which is based on the difference between the mean and the median. Using this relationship, coefficient of skewness can range from minus 3 up to positive 3. A value of 3, such as 2.57, indicates considerable negative skewness. A value such as 1.63 indicates moderate positive skewness, whereas a value of 0, which will occur when the mean and median are equal indicates that the distribution is symmetrical and that there is no skewness present. Now, let's take a look at the steps to calculate skewness using the Pearson method. First, we need to find the values for the mean, median, and the standard deviation. Once we have all of these values, we simply input them into the Pearson coefficient of skewness formula, like so. SK stands for skewness equals to 3 times mean minus median over standard deviation. Finally, we solve and interpret the findings. Remember that we comment on the magnitude and the sign of skewness. Let's look at this example. A sample of five clerks revised the following number of tax records in the last hour. 73, 98, 60, 92, and 84. Compute the coefficient of skewness using the Pearson method. And what is your conclusion regarding the shape of the distribution? To find the skewness using the Pearson method, the first thing we need to do is to find the mean and the median. To find the mean, we simply use this formula. x bar equals to the sum of x, which is the sum of all of the values of the tax records, divided by the total number of tax records given, which is 5. So here, 407 divided by 5, it gives you the mean of 81.4. To find the median, we simply rearrange the values given from the smallest to the biggest number, or the biggest to the smallest number. Median stands for the middle value, so the middle value here is 84. Next, we we'll try to find the standard deviation. Simply use the standard deviation formula, and it will give you the standard deviation equals to 15.19. You may pause this video and try to work out all of this on your own first. And finally, to find the skewness using the Pearson method, we simply input all of the values just now into this formula. SK equals to 3 times 81.4 minus 84 over 15.19. And it gives you minus 0 0.51. As for the conclusion regarding the shape of the distribution, we can say that the distribution is slightly skewed to the left.